Mother Nature shares pretty good image, right? Pretty flowers, rainbows, all of that. But let's get real for a moment here. Mother Nature also gives us poison dart frogs of all kinds, highly toxic secretions. Mother Nature also gives us the opium poppy that contains morphine. Well, morphine can be used for benefit, but it can also be used to kill. And just uh, consider, for example, the puffer fish. Tetrodotoxin is the toxin that it contains, and that is tremendously powerful. So not everything about nature is great. Why do I bring this up? Because I've long had an issue with marketing of the term natural. Over my now career that spans over 40 years, I think the single biggest myth I fight is that natural is safe and synthetic is dangerous. There is no such equation. Nature is not benign. And whether a compound is synthetic or not does not determine its properties. Now, I bring this up because uh, uh, marketers very often try to get the word natural into their advertising even when they are talking about substances that are quite synthetic. For example, take a look at shampoos. Shampoos contain detergents. Sodium lauryl sulfate is one of the most common ones. It's a very, very interesting substance. Let me just tell you what it does. First of all, it acts as a surfactant. It means that it gets in between water molecules and allows the surface of the water to stretch so that you can make uh, bubbles, for example. Uh, let me just give you an interesting little example that I just happened to have. This is a replica of a gift that was given to Queen Victoria. And uh, it is uh, a bubble maker. The original one was made of gold. Of course, this, this one isn't, but it is indeed a perfect replica that was uh, given to her. And in it was a soap solution that resulted in bubbles. Of course, it's very old so that we don't get the bubbles anymore, but it's interesting. We do get bubbles, however, when we put a surfactant such as sodium lauryl sulfate into water because the water molecules then can stretch around the air bubbles. Well, how does this happen? It happens because this molecule, sodium lauryl sulfate, has two ends. One end is soluble in water. The other end is soluble in oily materials. So this molecule acts not only as a surfactant by getting in between water molecules, but also it can relieve, release soil from surfaces because one end will dissolve in the oily layer, the other end dissolves in water, and the soil is pulled off of a fabric. Why do I talk about this? Because marketers will use the term nature-derived or naturally-derived to describe sodium lauryl sulfate. Well, indeed, it is made from coconut oil. However, that coconut oil is highly processed. The coconut oil is first converted into lauric acid. That is then converted in the lab to lauryl alcohol. That's reacted with sulfuric acid to form the sodium lauryl sulfate. So I think calling that natural is really somewhat of a stretch. Of course, there's nothing wrong with it because it's not natural. The properties of a material are not determined by whether it was made by Mother Nature in a bush or by a chemist in a lab. The properties are determined by studying it. And sodium lauryl sulfate is a very, very functional substance. It gives us great foam. It's wonderful in shampoos. It's great in detergents. Yes, there is a bit of a downside, and some people it can cause a skin irritation, but that is very rare. Stories about it causing cancer are total nonsense. So there, you know a little bit about sodium lauryl sulfate, and although some people refer to it as nature-derived, that is totally meaningless. What is meaningful is that it has been studied, and it works well as a foaming agent, it works well as a surfactant, it works well as a detergent. And remember, above all, that the properties of a material are not determined by its origin. They are determined by studying it. And sodium lauryl sulfate is a commonly used substance, and there's no problem with it.